Good evening and happy Sabbath, everyone. Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight. Welcome to the fifth night of the Daniel and Revelation Victory Series with the evangelist Dr. Carl Archer, president of the North Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. We are your hosts. Bernalia Campbell. And Lauren Sadler. We have a lot in store for you, and we would like to officially welcome you to the Victory Series. We are going to try something a bit interactive tonight, okay? So, you have three words to say, okay? Those three words will be revealed, receive, and believe, okay? You're gonna repeat after me. Revealed, receive, and believe. Amazing job, okay. So, now, when I point at you the first time, you're going to say revealed. The second time, you're going to say, receive. And the third time, you will say, believe. Ready to try it? Ready. OK. So this is the Daniel and Revelation series, where the truth will be revealed. And you will receive if you only believe. believe. Amen. Amen. To our online viewers, please type in the chat where are you viewing from. We are also encouraging everyone to be a witness by sharing the link with your family and friends. If you have not subscribed to the SDA channel or to the North Jamaica Conference YouTube channel, please do so. We cannot afford for you to miss out on eternity. Something good is going to happen throughout this series, and we would love to see the sanctuary filled. Amen. So I invite you to come each evening with your Bible and an open mind to denounce error and unravel truth. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. Amen. God, thank you for bringing us all here so that 
we may spend time together and learn about God. Thank you, and please continue to guide the people on their way. Please bless everyone. Please help that this service goes well and that everyone is blessed. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 Good evening, everyone, and happy Sabbath. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, let us go to our first song or hymnal, bringing in the Sabbath, hymn 388. Don't forget the Sabbath. Lord our God has blessed upon the weak, the brightest of all the weak, the best. It brings repose from labor, it tells of joy divine, it speaks of light descending with heavenly beauty shine. Sabbath day. Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day. Keep the Sabbath holy and worship him today. Who said to his disciples, I am the living way. This is our last song, Victory in Jesus. Precious blood atoning, then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory. 
victory beneath the cleansing blood. I heard about his healing of his cleansing blood. Reveal him. God made the lame to walk again and made the blind to see. I heard Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and brought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere i knew him and all my love is to him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood i heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory and i heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day i'll sing up there the song of victory victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me victory beneath the cleansing flood oh victory in jesus my savior forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me Good evening and happy Sabbath, everyone. I am bringing you your health nugget for tonight, which is on colon health and colon cancer screening. Now, the incidence of colon health has been increasing, especially in African Americans. Initially, the age of screening was 50. Because of the increased incidence, they have decreased it to 45. And in just my two, going on three years of practice, I had two patients 40s, early 40s, young African-American male who was diagnosed with colon cancer and the only indicator I had was they had anemia. So there were no other symptoms. So this is real and this is a concerning trend. Um, and as doctors, we're very concerned about this. So make sure that once you hit age 45, you go to your primary care doctor and you get your colonoscopy. That is the ideal way of checking for colon cancer. There are other avenues too, such as a cologuard or the FIT test, um, but the most ideal is a colonoscopy. And we need to be mindful of our lifestyle. What are we doing that's increasing our risk of colon cancer? Eating processed meats, so the hot dogs, um, deli meats, a, low, a diet low in veggies and fruits, a high fat diet that includes meats, cheese, fried foods, being overweight and obese, if you have a family history, so make sure you're aware of your family history if there's any colon cancer in the family. If you have irritable bowel um, 
inflammatory bowel diseases such as Crohn's disease um, or ulcerative colitis that can increase your risk of colon cancer. Smoking, and that includes vaping. Vaping is not any safer, it's actually worse. And alcohol intake as well as lack of exercise. You need to eat more fruits and vegetables, a back to eat and diet pretty much, to help decrease your risk of colon cancer. So keep this in mind, make sure you follow up with your PCP and make sure you start to adopt a back to eat and diet, amen? amen. Good evening, everyone. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just one sin Seeking forgiveness When your heart knows within Our God will not judge us On how big or how small He looks for Calvary's blood to cover it all. Oh, the blood, the blood, it covers it all. Love has no boundaries since that paid in full. Jesus knew Just blood, it covers it all. Try to imagine how this miracle took place. Love be on measure. Our God's amazing grace. Sometime when we're weary, we may stumble and fall, but just one drop of His precious blood, 
it covers it all. Oh, the blood, the blood, it covers it all. Love has no boundaries since death paid in full. Jesus knew at the beginning that man would surely fall. I'm glad the Savior's precious blood, it covers it all. Jesus knew. Savior's precious blood. Yes, it was His precious blood that covers it all. It covers it all. Hallelujah. Hello again, it's gift time. So we're giving out gifts. Is there anyone here for the first time? And if you are here for the first time, um, we would love if you can please stand so that we may give you a gift. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay, so the ushers will be coming forward. Okay, is there any children here who are coming for the first time, visitors' children? Okay, is there, is there any visitors who've been here for every weeknight? Okay, um... Well, in that case, it is time for our quiz. And this quiz will be about the topics that the evangelist has been speaking about. So I do hope you have been paying attention. Now, this first question is for the Adventists who are here. So this is free reign. Anybody who thinks they knows the an know the answer can um, raise their hand. And this is for those who are in the church. And the question is, in prophetic language, what do these following objects represent? The first one is a horn. The second is a beast. And the third is the wind. In prophetic language, the following represent. Sister Campbell. You are absolutely correct. And for our visitors who are in who are in house, if any of you would like to answer this question, um, this is also based on one of the sermons that the evangelists have given us. And the question is, in the days of the kings that Daniel saw in his dream, who will set up a kingdom? Is there anyone who might know the answer? Yes? No, the answer is God. I would love to thank everyone who participated. 
in the quiz. And the last question will go to, out to all those who are watching online. So if you know the answer, please drop it in the chat. The question is, according to God's prophetic, accords to Daniel's prophetic interpretation, the image that King Nebuchadnezzar in his, saw in his dream represents, and we will let you know the answer at the end. Now, it is time for the speaker to come to us. Tonight, his topic is America and Prophecy, and I'm sure it will be a very interesting and spirit-filled um, sermon, so please pray, send a prayer in your heart as he comes to enlighten us. Thank you. Let us all stand as we sing our theme song, Redemption, Joy, Die. Let us all stand. Oh, sorry. One minute, please. Please be seated. We'll have prayer first. Let us stand for prayer, please. Let us pray. God of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we come tonight to give you thanks for the knowledge of knowing that in these last days of Earth's history, we can claim you without a doubt that you are our God. Father, we come this evening to give you thanks for your mercies and your grace. For your watchful care throughout the day, we say thank you, Lord. For the angels you sent to watch over us, thank you, Lord. For taking us into this place safe, we say thank you. And to know, Lord, we ask for forgiveness of all our transgressions. We ask that you cleanse us all and cover us with your own righteousness and give here to our cry. Father, in the name of Jesus, this evening we deliver into your hands every visitor that is in this place. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you will clear their minds as they come seeking salvation, that you will make them understand your words with clarity, that they will make wise decisions to surrender their lives to you. Father, those that would love to be here, and because of various reasons they are not here, we ask the same blessing for each one. Those that are on the various platforms watching tonight, oh Lord, give them a special blessing. Lord, be with us as church members. Let the series of meeting be a revival in every one of us heart. Father, in a special way we deliver into your hand your man service. Your man servant, your Elijah in these last days. Thank you for our evangelists. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we deliver him this moment. We're asking you that you shed your Holy Spirit over him. Yes. Lord, we ask that you give him a special anointing, mentally, spiritually, physically. We know the angel, the, the, that old demons, he would love to confuse him tonight. But Lord, we ask that you put your words in his mouth. Yes. We ask that you let him speak with clarity and deliver your message. Yes. Father, we ask that in this place tonight, it will be a mighty revival. Yes. Send your holy angels to keep guard. Send your Holy Spirit to saturate this place. Father, we ask that tonight will be a night of revival, a night of deliverance, that when the series of meeting is finished, everyone that are here, those on the various platforms, and everyone who even receive an invitation, they will be renewed, they will be revived, they will come to a wise decision and ask, what must I do to be saved? Amen. Father, we release everyone now into your hands. Take over now and let your name be glorified. Rise up a standard against the enemy, O oh God, and cause every one of us in here with, to seal our hearts to go home with you when you shall come to claim your own. 
In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, that time, he remains standing as we sing our theme song. away before before we are seated oh heavenly father we thank you for the joy that we have to call you our father and we ask you now to speak with clarity to each heart so that no one will, will be the same after the message this evening we pray in Jesus name amen thank you so much thank you so much uh, please be seated, everyone. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Very happy to see our uh, friends and visitors and everyone this evening. And to know, to be assured, to be reminded that God, God is blessing all of us. I want to take the opportunity this Sabbath to express gratitude to and to welcome those who are joining us on the various online platforms. Um, I'm going to leave you for the last because you are here. So for those who are joining us on 
of Facebook, I greet you. Uh, Keturah Smith, Janet Morgan, Pauline Collins, so many of you, uh, Jeanette Walters, Joan Rose, uh, Berta Martin, etc., etc., Valerie Wilson, etc., etc. And I also want to greet all of those who are uh, with us on our um, sun Sunrise uh, platform. Uh, first of all, let me touch base since I have this one already. On our North Jamaica platform, a YouTube platform, I see uh, Jocelyn McDonald right here from Florida. I don't know if she's in Florida today or in Jamaica. Happy to have you, Sister Jocelyn, Sister Vida Records, uh, Sister Shaw, Pauline Blake, and Marie Carnegie, uh, and John Thomas. Marcia Tennant, all of these, uh, Yannick Thompson, some of them from Camille Dawes from Guyana, and people from all across the world. I was, somebody was following us from London that evening, and when I just mentioned England, the person sent a message to say, yes, we are here watching. And we are so happy to know that you are there. But please forgive me, I cannot close without going to the sunrise platform, because even though we want all the Sunrise people to be here, um, some of them can't be here. So uh, Ricardo, hmm, Ricardo Porsches, Owen Cena Jones, Selburn Webb, huh. all right, well, good. Cynthia Brown, I know all of these people. Um, I'm familiar with them, Ivan Chambers. Happy to have all of you. And for those of us who are joining us here in person, we praise God for you. Now, let me tell you, I appreciate that most of you had to make a significant sacrifice to be here tonight. Because it is Friday. And you know that for Friday, Adventists, it's a challenging time. Um, somebody said, you know, Pastor, I have to be prepping for church. So I know it is. And to see you here, in large numbers, we are really, I'm really appreciative, and I know that God will bless us in a very special way. I want to thank, I'm happy to see you, Sister Gail. <laughs> and thank you. And I have so many of our visitors, some of whom I have had the opportunity of meeting in their homes, and we are happy to have you. Some of you, we have not been able to meet you in your homes as yet, because we have not been able to find you. And <laughs> But I have the answer. I have the answer. How to find you? So if you are working from, if you are working from eight o'clock in the morning to five o'clock, then we can meet you here. Say amen, no man. Amen. Right. And if you are working from twelve, if you are working from eight to five or six, and then from six or seven to one or two and you go back out eight, we can find you. If you leave seven o'clock in the mornings, we can come six o'clock. Yeah, so just tell us. Now, it doesn't matter how many jobs you have. You must go home for a few hours. And, and our visit, maybe just one. So give us one hour or 45 minutes or 30 minutes out of the five or six hours you have at home. And just once you tell us if it is 4 o'clock in the morning, we have to make sure we carry somebody because we, we can't have the pastor going to somebody's house. <laughs> Especially, you know, a female's house. So what if Pastor Archer maybe camera pick me up in there? So I have to make sure that we have <laughs> other people out there. So it's a joy. It has been a joy meeting some of you in your homes. It's a real joy. And of course, for some of you who may not be able to meet us at your homes, and if you are working, and if your work allows you to take visitors lunchtime, you have an hour, that's enough. We don't need an hour. Or maybe in your lunchtime you can step outside, don't worry, 20 minutes, that's enough. So, what, so there's no one that we cannot visit. Unless you live in, in um, maybe one of the, 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 the keys, 
it may be a little difficult, but we can still arrange something. <laughs> we can still arrange something. So it's a joy having you. This evening, I'm happy to let you know that we are, let me just give you a quick idea of what obtains, let me get my thing, what obtains for, for tomorrow. Here it is. Now for tomorrow, God permitting, the, the topics will be in the morning, the topic will be the fullness of the time. The fullness of the time. And we want to look by God's grace at what Jesus meant when he said, when he said, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. We're going to look at that uh, from the prophetic word of Daniel. And then in the evening, uh, out of the ashes, 24 elders. Allah, what time do we go? What time is it for tomorrow? So it's 6 o'clock tomorrow. So 6 to 7.30 tomorrow. Uh, that would be 5 to 6.30 Jamaica time. Or that's tomorrow evening. So we will not be on a regular time tomorrow evening. But the rest of the evenings, Sunday evening, are the dead really dead? Monday evening, Armageddon. Tuesday evening, the mark of the beast. We're going to touch on the Antichrist that evening as well. Wednesday evening, the seven last plagues. Thursday evening, rest night. Friday evening, the great sacrifice. Then we close off on Sabbath with Judas and the 144,000. I am happy to tell you also that tomorrow there's going to be a baptism right here. Amen. Amen. And we praise God for those who have uh, chosen to give Jesus their hearts. But tomorrow is church day. And if there's any time, if there's any time when we can let you home late, it, it, it shouldn't be tonight. Because, because tomorrow you need to be back here for 9, 9.15, all right? So let us go forward with the word of God. So I, my, my, okay, good. So this evening, the topic is America, America in prophecy. We shared with you a few evenings ago the vision that Daniel had. And in this vision, Daniel saw an image. And in the image, he saw a large image whose head was of gold, representing Babylon, arms and chest of silver, representing Medo Persia, belly and thighs of brass or bronze, representing Greece, legs of iron, representing Rome, feet, a mixture of iron and clay, representing the divided kingdoms of Europe, and then the stone cut out without hands that came and smote the image, shattered it. And after the stone smote the image, the stone became a large mountain and filled the whole earth. That stone represented the kingdom, Christ and his kingdom, that will fill the whole earth. Daniel gave the interpretation of the dream. Daniel said to, to Nebuchadnezzar, you are the cell of gold. That's Babylon. And after you, another kingdom inferior to you. That's Middle Persia. A third kingdom of, of bronze, he said. That's Greece. And then the legs of iron, Rome, that interacted with Christ. And after that, the divided kingdoms of Europe. And the Bible says, in the days of these kings, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. That kingdom represents Christ and his eternal kingdom. That rock that was cut out without hands represents Christ and his eternal kingdom. But Daniel saw something of the greatness of the sacrifice of Christ. Because when Jesus saw what was about to transpire on the earth, he determined that he would die for the human race to make it possible for all of us to overcome and by God's grace to be victorious. So when Jesus went to the cross, as a matter of fact, when he was in Gethsemane, Christ had some real struggles there in Gethsemane because the thought was, the plan was that he would die for the sinful race. Yes. That was the plan. But when he came, he discovered that the race was not kind at all. As a matter of fact, when I say he discovered, I'm speaking from a human angle. Because you know that God knows everything. Yes. But I'm speaking from a human angle. And, and we know that Judas betrayed him. Peter
Peter denied him. All the apostles forsook him. And when he was in Gethsemane, Satan pointed all this out to him. Are these the people for whom you died? You came to die? One will betray you. The very one that you chose will betray you. One will deny you whom you called. All will first. You chose the twelve. More properly, the eleven. Because remember that Judas chose himself. So you chose the disciples, the, the eleven plus Judas. And all of them that you chose Jesus will betray you. What sense does it make to die for these people? And, 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 and Satan will have showed Jesus all the challenges to face the world. He would have said, look at all of these people. Look down into the, the last centuries. Come with me, Jesus, to 2024. Look at the calls you make for people to give Jesus their hearts. And look at how people resist you and turn their backs on you. The best thing for you to do is to leave them alone and go back to heaven. Because what benefit is there? Look at the world. What's the population? Seven point, is it eight billion now? About, I think, 7.9 or so, eight? About eight billion. Look at the world, eight billion. How many are serving you, Jesus? So, I imagine Satan say, says to Jesus, um, I don't think this is a wise financial investment at all. Because you are giving, you are putting in everything, including your life. What are your returns likely to be? But Jesus is happy with the return of one soul. So when he sees so many souls, remember, you know, in God's sight, the value of a soul is beyond limit. As a matter of fact, did you know? Did you know, you know, one, one person observed that, that the value of a soul is far beyond the value of a world. Think about, think about, think about all the oil in America, including the untapped oil that that the politicians fighting over whether to tap it or not. <laughs> Think about all the oil in Russia, in Iran, Saudi Arabia, Oman, all of these areas, all the, in Venezuela. Put all that together. Then put all the towers, the value of the towers together. Empire State, Charlie, the high rise ones again. Chicago, that building in Chicago there, Sears Towers. Sears Towers and the, the, the Freedom Tower, it, the one that was built to replace the Twin Freedom Tower. All of those, I have other towers I could call, but it's a political season, so I won't call some of them. All the towers, <laughs> all the towers you can think of. Put all the values together. Value all of that. All of that does not amount. One soul is of more value to God than all of those things. All the value of Elon Musk, SpaceX, and Tesla, Toyota, all the value of all of these, one soul is of more value than all of that. So Jesus came to die to make us know that whatever the challenges are in this world, by God's grace, we can overcome. So as we go to America in prophecy, I want you to bear that in mind. The prophet John was shown a vision of various beasts representing kingdoms. In Revelation 13, 11, we, the Bible tells us, John says, I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb. He spake as a dragon. Now what do beasts represent? What did we say beasts represent in, king, in, in, in Bible? Daniel 7, 23, thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth what? Kingdom. Kingdom. So when he says, I saw another beast come up out of the earth, he saw another kingdom rise up out of the earth. When would this kingdom arise? Which kingdom is it? When would it arise? Because the time of its rise gives us a clue as to which kingdom 
It is. When would it arise? Revelation 13, 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Now, Revelation 13, 11 introduces the new beast who are two horns like a lamb. Verse 10 tells us where the, other, where the time started. He that leads into captivity, referring to the Roman, Roman system, the papacy. So just as the papacy led others into captivity and, and led in the, in the death of others, so now when the papacy would have done that, the papacy itself would, be, would go into captivity and the papacy itself would suffer a wound. And when that time comes, at that same time, another world kingdom would be coming up. That's a marker for that. When did this Roman church suffer this wound? Now, the wound suffered by U.S., by the, 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 the beast that ushered in U.S., was really the, the, the wound that the papacy received, 1798. And we're going to look at that uh, a couple nights from now. But I want to nail on this important day, 1798. That is a date when the French General Berthier uh, entered Rome, captured the Pope, Pope Pius VI, exiled him in Valence, France, because, because you know, Napoleon was, was basically the done then, uh, and exiled him in Valence, France. Everybody thought that the papacy was over. The head of the Roman Catholic Church was done, finished, destroyed. But the Bible had said the deadly wound would be healed later on. We'll come back to that. So 1798 is when this beast that led others into captivity went into captivity. That's the Roman system, the papacy, 1798. At that time, another world kingdom was just coming up. Let's find out which world kingdom is this. How, how would it arise? It was seen coming up or springing up. Look at what the text says. It would arise without having to conquer other kingdoms. Because when Daniel was speaking of the other nations, Daniel said he saw, he saw the four winds striving on the seas. And as the seas were, were becoming turbulent, representing large groups of people, he saw nations come up. But look how this one arose. This one is different. Look at this. Revelation 13, 11. And I beheld another beast coming up from where? Out of the earth. Not the sea like all the others, but out of the earth. Now, when beasts come up out of seas or waters, what does that represent? We are told. A vast, vast population. Revelation 17, 15. He saith unto me, the waters which are soiled, where the whole sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and kings. So when, when beasts arise out of waters, it represents that kingdoms are coming up out of vastly populated areas. But when beasts arise out of earth, it, it is representing the opposite, sparsely populated areas. So this new kingdom, like a lamb-like beast, would not come up out of the vast populated areas like Europe. But it arises someplace near 1798. We know that. That's when the papers receive this wood. It, it's a country that arises like a plant coming up. Because the Bible says it was coming up. Original springing up. Like a plant springing up. That's the idea there. When it says it was seen coming up, it was springing up into existence. In 1798, it's a country that would arise in a sparsely populated area. So this is not a European country, because the European countries were very, very highly populated. All across Europe, population was high. But this country would come up at a place where very few people resided. And the country, most of all, important of all, it would not overcome any other kingdom to arise. It arose without conquest. In Europe, when you look at other beasts, 
Media Persia arose by conquering Babylon. Babylon had conquered Assyria and Egypt. Media Persia conquered Babylon. Greece conquered Media Persia. Rome conquered Greece. And that is how it, it was. Nations arose by conquering others. But this nation would come up without conquest, without conquering anyone, anyone, coming up in the 1798 period and just rising up quietly. Which country was this? Let's take a look. Let's take a look at the US history now. And that's where we are now. Not true? Right. right. Now, when did America get independent, receive independence? July 4, 1776. It means that US, uh, in 1798, the US was just coming up, just springing up as a nation. When the papacy was collapsing, they received a deadly wound. 1798, US was just 22 years old. Brand new nation, just springing up. It arose in a sparsely populated area. Uh, you know your history more than I do. At this time, you know the Europeans were basically coming across a couple of years, centuries before that, coming across. We did not have yet a whole lot of Europeans there, but I'm sure when they came, other individuals were here. You know, history is interesting, you know. History is interesting. When people talk about um, countries discovered, history is very interesting. I'm not going to get into your history because I'm in your territory. But let me get into my history, Jamaican history. Do you know that we are taught in school Columbus discovered Jamaica? Did you know that when Columbus came to Jamaica, people were there already? Then, then, then how oh, you can discover a country and whole people live there already? <laughs> anyway, we're not going to get into that history. So now, what we find, the U.S. arose without conquest. There was no nation fight to overcome. It, it rose silently into power, became strong without conquest, while the European countries were attacking each other and, and diminishing each other's power and influence. The U.S. rose into great prominence. But the Bible says it had two horns. The little one that came up, the little animal that came up, had two horns like a lamb, representing the separation of church and state. So the U.S. came up as a great country. It still is a great country. So church and state would be separated, which, which was not existing in Europe. In the, in the, in the great countries of Europe, church and state were moving together. And most countries had a state church. And when the Pope spoke, or the bishop of the church spoke, that's what the state had to do. When the Europeans came to America, the, th the theme was they wanted a country, a church without a Pope, and a country without a king. Yes, that's what they said. They wanted a country without a king and a church without a pope. And so they made the constitution, this US constitution is one of the best constitutions in the world. Do you know, part of it, one of the articles says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Did you know that? Congress cannot make any law respecting how to establish a religion, whether a religion can be established, or prohibiting the free exercise of that religion in the Constitution. That is why many people feel that, that for a persecution to come involving Sabbath keepers, there has to be a change of the Constitution. I will soon tell you why there doesn't have to be any change. I'm going to come to that. So church and state will be separated. Protestantism and republicanism, two different great principles. The Protestant aspect of the, the church aspect, Protestantism, and the Republican form of government, which has done a good purpose. The real assert, when I say Republican form of government, don't get me wrong, you know. Republican does, I'm not talking about Republican and Democrat. Well, let me rush to clarify that. <laughs> Republican form of government, meaning the system of government that you have. So you have like a president, it's not like the, the, um, the, British, the British style where you have a prime minister, you have ministers um, that you vote for and so on, 
and the prime minister and so on is the head of the party and so on. It doesn't have to be like that. In your country, you don't have to be the head of a party to be president. Did you know that? An independent man can be president or a woman. But I don't think they will vote for it. But anyway, it can happen. So that I'm talking about, when I say republicanism, I'm not talking about the Republican Party. I'm talking about the system of government that you have here. The Bible says, though, it looked good, two horns like a lamb. But when he opened his mouth to speak, he spake as what? A dragon. You know which country I'm talking about? United States of America. Revelation 13, 11, he spake as a dragon. In other words, the country looks tender and gentle and kind and good. And this is a good country. It's a kind country. I've known many countries that have benefited. But it has spoken like a, 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 a dragon. I remember, for example, I remember when, when, when there was the invasion of Iraq, or when there was the potential to invade Iraq, and the president said, if you're not with us, you're against us. In other words, you know, I remember there was a dispute. <laughs> there was a dispute in the Caribbean, and Jamaica said something. Jamaica said something. And what Jamaica said wasn't in harmony with the U.S. point. And the U.S. just sent a message. And the message was, I'm paraphrasing, you know, if you can't support us, don't talk. You don't talk. You, so you can't talk, you know, but don't, don't talk. So we see the, 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 the country speaking like a dragon because it has a kind of universal influence and impact. So let me tell you something, brethren. I hear a lot of talk about world powers. Not China, not Russia, not Germany, not Britain, not Iran, not Israel, not Turkey, will be the great power of the last days. The prophecy had said, the United States of America is a country that will dictate world events and deal with religious challenges, not Russia and China and India. These are great rising powers, but they are not the ones based on the prophecy that will dictate things to the world in the last days. America will be. The United States of America will be. Let's go a step further. We are told in verse 12 of chapter 13 of this first beast, he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him. So the U.S. came on the scene, but there was a first beast, the Roman church, the Roman system, the papacy. And the Bible says that, that this beast with the two horns will exercise all the power of the first beast, which is the papacy, before it. And he caused the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So, the country that will compel people across the globe to follow the papacy, the Roman church, the Roman system, the Pope, in the US will do that. It is the United States that will compel nations across the globe to do something that when they do it, it is actually worshiping the papal power. Let's take a quick look at that. So the US will force the world to worship this beast, the papacy. That's what the prophecy says. How will it do it? How will it happen? We are told he, he would exercise all the power of the first beast. That's what the text says. So what, let's look at what, what did the first beast do? Because the U.S. will exercise all the power of the first beast. So let's look at the power of the first beast. Revelation 13, 5. It was given unto him, the papacy, to make war with the saints and to overcome them. This text did not say he made war with the saints but the saints overcame. That's what it said, you know. The evil power made war and overcame them. And then power was given him, the papacy, over all kindreds and tongues and power. So the U.S. will get power again, like the papacy, over all kindreds. Because he will exercise all the power of the first beast, which is the papacy. Verse 13 says, he doeth great wonders. Look at this. So that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. 
I'm going to just make one statement on that. I don't have time for that tonight. Let's think about it. Which country in the world has most, the vast majority of miracle working preachers in the world? You don't have to answer. You don't have to answer. The vast majority of great preachers who work miracles, where are they from? No, the Bible says he, he doeth great wonders. America is talking, you know. He causeth fire to come down from heaven and earth in the sight of men. So there are systems here, religious systems, that are working miracles that will stun people. Verses 13 and 14 of chapter 16 tells us how that will be. I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, spiritism, come out of the mouth of the dragon. Out of the mouth of the beast, that's the papal power. Out of the mouth of the false prophet. And that false prophet represents now America in its apostate Protestant style. Because America says one thing, internal prophecy. He looks like a lamb. But when he opens his mouth, he speaks like a dragon. That's why the text calls it false prophet. It's not meant to be a derogatory term. The idea here is that, is that you, 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 you look one way. But you speak another way. And the Bible says, they are the spirits of devils working miracles. These, these, these evil spirits. So when you look at all of these dramatic miracles around the world, and people are doing them and they don't even love God. They don't even keep God's commandments. Where do you think the power comes from? Look at what the Bible says. They are the spirits of devils, no pastor, Devils can't work miracles. But look at the text again. They are the spirit of devils working miracles. It didn't say the spirit of devils that appear to work miracles. So spirits of devils will work miracles. And many times when we see all of these, many of these um, great preachers across the world who are working miracles, but they reject God's commandments. The spirit of God cannot be in them. So the miracles are wrought by another spirit, different from the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit cooperates with God and works with his people in the ambit of God's commandments. Obedience to God's commandments. So when people disobey God's commandments, establish different rules, put different systems in place, reject what God says, and then stand up and work miracles, they are doing it through the, the spirit of devils. So, so... So if you go and lay your hands on the radio, <laughs> and, and to give whatever money and so on and so on. You know, brethren, let me tell you something. God's gifts of healing don't require donations. Any church, including the Adventist church, that ties miracles and healing and prayer to donations, something is wrong. Any church that ties prayer and healing to money is not of God. Because God's gifts are free. And when God gives us the gifts, how can we charge the people to come for prayer? How can we charge people for a miracle? A lady, you know, she wanted, she, she, she felt she was demon possessed and she came to me. And as she made her argument and I was presenting the word, she, she was, I wanted to know what the charge was. I was so happy to tell her, I am a member of the Seventh Day Adventist Church and I don't charge for prayer. I was so happy to tell her. And I felt proud, you see. <laughs> proud that I'm a part of a, of a movement that doesn't tie helping people like that to money. So there were miracles and verse 14 of Revelation 13 says that these, by these miracles he deceived them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do with the set of the beast. Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which are the wound by a sword and did live. So, so it is the United States that will say to the world, let us 
establish something looking like the papacy. Let us put up something just like what the Roman Catholic system was. An image of it, something looking very much like it. So the first beast had three distinctive things that I want to highlight. It was a union of church and state, the papacy. It was a Sunday worshiping power. So the first beast joined states and church together. The first beast established Sunday as a day of worship when God said the seventh day. The first beast had another challenge. It was a persecuting power. It persecuted God's people. These three things. So now, if, if the U.S. is going to be an, form an image to the beast, it means that U.S. will do these same things. There will be a union of church and state in the U.S. So church will reach a stage where it controls the state again. That day is coming. It will dictate to the state what to do. It's going to be a Sunday worshiping power. Some system is going to be established in the U.S. and elsewhere that compels people to acknowledge Sunday as the Sabbath. Laws are going to be passed forcing people because the text says that it's going to be an image to the beast. And thirdly, the beast persecuted God's people and overcame them. So in the United States, persecution of God's people is going to happen again. Pastor, those things can't happen. Modern times, people are free here. Land of the the, but, and land of the brave. And what, what, what of the free again? Home of the free. Land of the brave. Can't happen. Well, let me tell you something. All it takes for a country to take away people's rights is just one pandemic. That's all it takes. So nobody should say it can't happen. I remember, I remember some years ago, I was going to a program in, 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 in um, Thailand. And I was flying from Los Angeles to Taiwan, a, a, a connecting flight. And when I went, everything was fine. No, it was, it was, it was the December after 9-11. But when I flew over, everything was fine. But when I was coming back, yes, they said, they said, I have to take off my shoes. I, I didn't take off my shoes to go. They said, ah, you have to take it off. And some Jamaicans, you know, you know, Jamaicans and so on and so on. But they had to take it off. Then after that, I, you have to take um, scan, eye scan. And, uh, and people quarrel about their rights. But you have to do it. Either you do it or you don't go anywhere. So the days are going to come when persecution is going to happen again. Because those who keep God's laws are going to be persecuted by the state. And, and, the, and the great point of, of test is the Sabbath. It is not the whole law is the problem. It's the Sabbath. Because the Sabbath is a sign of our loyalty to God. It's a sign of loyalty to God or to the enemy. Everything God does, Satan counterfeits to mislead people. So God has a Sabbath. Satan counterfeits it. And he establishes one as well. But look at God. God has a Sabbath. That is the last day of the week. Satan puts one. The first day of the week. But when he was finished counterfeiting the two of them. And he says to the world. You better choose one. So God says, you better choose one. And Satan says, you better choose one. So our decision is a sign of our loyalty to one power or the other. The fourth commandment says, Revelation 28 to 11, remember the Sabbath day. That's what God says, to keep it holy. Why did God say remember? Ten commandments, only one where he says, remember. He knows we would forget. Remember. It's important. Six days shall go labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath. So God says, you know, you know, you know, human beings are very, are very um, intelligent, you know. But when God say, when God means something, he says it, you know. And when God says it, 
He means it. God says, in it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Why? In six days the Lord made heaven and the sea, all that in them is rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Three things he did to that day. He rested on it. He blessed it. He sanctified it. Sanctify means to put apart for special holy purpose. God did not bless, rest, and sanctify any other day. So there's no other day that can be, that can be God's Sabbath. So if, if we choose Tuesday as our Sabbath, we can say Tuesday is, I can say Tuesday is my Sabbath. Free to, we can say that. Tuesday is my Sabbath. But the Lord's Sabbath, the Sabbath of Jesus, God's Sabbath is the seventh day of the week. I'm not going to have time to dwell on that this evening. But the world has been violating God's law. Ezekiel 22 verse 26. Her priests have violated my law. Ezekiel saw a time when Israel would violate God's law and would be a type of what would happen in the last days. Her priests have violated my law. Have, put, have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the the holy and profane. Neither have they shown difference between unclean and the clean. And look at this. And have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths. So the priests and leaders of churches are deliberately hiding their eyes from the Sabbath and misleading the congregations. There are many reasons why people do that, you know. Some people do it because if they tell the truth, the offering is gone. Tithe cut. They tell the truth. Salary in peril. <laughs> and people have other reasons, which we can explore at another time. But pastor, some people say, pastor, listen, listen pastor. All that you're saying is true. I know that in the Bible. But the thing is, I, I love God. And I do my best. Will God reject when I offer him my worship as a Sunday worshiper? Will God reject it? Pastor, speak up. Let me hear. <laughs> For those online on Sunrise, Sunrise uh, platform, YouTube and NJC platforms, you may be saying, speak up, Pastor. What? When I do everything, I keep nine commandments. Nine of them. So I am 90% in line with God. 90%. Nine out of ten. When you get 90% in school, you are, it's A. That is A. Pastor, my Christian faith is graded A. I get 90. A. Will God accept it, Pastor? God cannot accept it. Let me tell you why I can't accept it. Look at Genesis 4. I'm going to close with this experience. Genesis 4 carries the experience of Cain and Abel. Verses 3 to 7. I'm just giving you this example to map up what I'm saying and by God's grace apply the lessons. In process of time, it came to pass, Genesis 4, 3 to 7, that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. No, I want you to to follow this carefully because I'm going to say something here that will shock some of you. So hold on to your seat. <laughs> and maybe some of you have never heard this before. And some of you may say, but hold on a man, something not with Pastor Archer, you know. But hold on. Once you go and check it out, you will find out this very well. Look at this. Cain brought of the fruit of the ground because Cain was a tiller of the soil. So he used to plant yam, for example, perhaps, or corn, or wheat, whatever it was. So he brought that. But look at this. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock, or of the fat thereof. Let me tell you what, what Abel brought. This may surprise you, but check it out when you go home. That's what sermons are about in the Adventist church. Abel brought two things to the Lord. Abel brought what Cain brought. He brought the fruit of the ground. 
but he also brought the flock. That is why the text says, and Abel, he also brought. That's why that phrase is there. He also brought. Because God required, you notice the sacrificial system that God established afterward. Meat offering was required, um, sacrifice of animals, but a meal offering was also required. So Cain, God required a meal offering and an animal offering. Abel, because some of us would say, oh, Cain is a tiller of the ground. Abel was a agronomist. He, he could just get and so on. But it wasn't just that. Abel did not only carry what he, he managed. He made sure to get the other things. So Abel didn't just come and say, well, I am the flock already, so I'm fine. And he could do nothing else. And Cain just didn't say, oh, I have my thing, I'm fine. No. Abel brought the flock, but he also went and, and got other things that God required. He brought both the, the fruit and the animal sacrifice. You can, look, you can do more research into that and you find out that is the case. So when they did that, God respected Abel's offering. But when Cain brought his offering, Cain, like Abel, Cain brought his offering to the church. Like Abel, Cain worshipped. Like Abel, Cain presented what God required, but he presented part way. Like Abel, Cain came to Jesus. Like Abel, Cain made an effort. But unlike Abel, Cain gave God a part, and God could not accept it. When it comes to worship, God will only accept what he requires. And it doesn't matter how close you come to it or not. God will not accept it. But pastor, how do we know? How do I know that it is a Sabbath anyway? How do I know? Days have changed. Men name the days. How do I know? Well, I can't go into the, the rationales. I won't go into that this evening. But let me just say for this evening, let me tell you something. The fact that God says, remember the Sabbath day, that alone is proof that the Sabbath day can't be lost. Because if God commanded us to obey it, that command binds God to make sure that the Sabbath can't be lost. The very fact that he requires us to do it, it means that God was obligated to shield and protect the Sabbath. It can't be lost. Do you know, do you know all of the, the things that govern time? Basically, they are governed by heavenly bodies. The day, the, the, the earth's rotation on its axis, that's a day. The year, the earth's movement around the sun, 365 days, 23 hours, and 23 point something hours. 23 days, 5 hours, and something. They run it off to, to, to um, 6, 5 hours, something. They run it off to 4 years. Every 4 year, you know, 4, 6, 24, so it's all right, it's a leap year. But, but that is what it is a year. The month, the moon, governs that. But the seasons, but listen, all through time, there has been no heavenly body governing the, the week. How have we determined what is a week all of these years? Not by sun, not by moon, not by stars. You know what has kept us and got the week all these years? Every, every last day of the week has been a Sabbath. That is what has kept the week. That's the only thing that guarantees a week, the Sabbath. So it has never changed, and it cannot be changed. So when Cain saw, Cain was upset, very wrath. Countenance fell. The Lord said, why are you wrath, Cain? Why is that countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? But God says, if thou doest not well, sin lies at the door. Cain came to worship. He came to church. He brought his offering. He knelt down before God. He offered his praise. He presented to the true God. But he brought 90%. And God rejected it. God requires our full surrender. We can't worship him as, as, as he requires. But when we give our best, when we follow him completely, God mingles our best with his righteousness. The blood of Jesus mingles in with God's, with God's righteousness. 
and so now all that gives us the victory. So we can't keep the Sabbath as we, as we should. But God's righteousness covers us and heals us. Now the Bible tells us that dramatic things are going to happen in the future. There's going to be, the world is going to pass laws, you know, forbidding people from accepting God's Sabbath. And if you don't accept it, as a matter of fact, the last text, Revelation 13, 16 and 17, say, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save it that of the mark or the name or the number of the beast. But God had already said, all those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life, they will be saved. When Cain brought his offering, God rejected it. When Abel brought his, God accepted it. But Abel lost his life for it. Abel lost his life for offering God 100%. He lost his life. For some of you, you may lose your job. To serve God 100% may cost you your job. It may cost you your friend. It may cost you... Huh, it may cost you family relationships. But God has to come first. Because, because he is the one who laid on his life for you and for me. And tonight, I want to let you know that you don't have to worry coming to give Jesus your heart. God will take care of you. Pastor, when I follow God, what will be the result? God will take care. God will provide. He has provided in the past. He will provide again. And as we close with our appeal song this evening, I want to pray. I, so you, many of you would have gotten a card. And there are eight things on those card, the cards that you have. I want you to write your names. I want you to indicate your addresses. Indicate your telephone numbers. And when you give your telephone numbers, make sure you have all the digits. A lady gave us a number and... We couldn't find it. One day it was missing. But thank God she put her address. And when we, could, when we called and called and called and couldn't get the number because the digit was wrong, we said, let's go to the address. And we went to the address and we found her. So put your full address and put your, because if one is wrong, by God's grace, we can, we can make it up. Today, the text says, I love the Lord. I want to be ready. If that's your decision, tick on that. I now surrender my life to Christ. Tick on that. I desire to be baptized. Choose that. I have wandered away from God and desire rebaptism. Choose that. I completely rededicate my life. Select that. Whatever it is, select that. I need help with a special problem. Select that. Bible study, whatever it is. Select that card. And right now, make your decision for Jesus. As we sing our appeal song, or closing some. Just make that decision. Indicate on the card what your decision is. And if you didn't receive a card, make sure you see us before you. Don't leave tonight if you didn't receive a card. Online, click on the link and indicate your commitments for him as we close. 99 in the hymnal is the song. Be not dismayed. Let's stand. But you have time. God will take care of you. That's a promise. God will take care of you. He bears wings of love above. God will take care. That's God's promise. job if you serve him God will take you concern about your relatives and friends God will take you don't, don't be afraid God will take you
we sing that second stanza? I'm going to add, for those, some person men might not have received a card. So I'm going to invite you. If you're having these challenges, honoring God's commandments and God's Sabbath, and you want us to pray for you today, I'm going to invite you to step out from your seats and come to the altar. We're going to pray for you. But we can't belong. So come right now as we make the appeal. Step out from those seats in faith and come. Bring those cards and come. Let's pray. Let's commit you in, in God's hands. Let's seek the victory. Let's claim the victory in Jesus' name this evening. All you may need through days of toil when your heart doth fail. Let's sing that stanza. And I invite you to come. Step out of your seats. Let's pray. And come in your place to Jesus. This God will take care. That's a promise. When dangers fail. He will take care. God will take care of you. God will take care. God will take care of you. I want to pray for somebody this evening. Through every day or all the way. So maybe you're having some challenges. God's commands. Are you, are you desired to keep them? But there are obstacles in the way. I'm going to ask you to come. I'm going to pray for you this evening. God will As we sing those stanzas. Oh, make a walk of faith. And come. Let's pray for you today. All you may need. to close there may be still someone who wants to come while we are praying you can still come or for those who have those cards just make sure you give them to us before you go so we can pray with you work with you encourage you and help you to make Jesus the center of your lives let's bow our heads let us pray our Heavenly Father today we magnify you and thank you for your goodness and the assurance that God will take care of us. Amen. Lord, we spread our needs, our challenges before you. And I ask you to take full charge. Take full charge of those who have responded. Take full charge of those who are shy. Full charge of those who have the cards. Let your Holy Spirit move upon hearts. And give all of us anew the assurance that God will take care of us. Grant us your rich blessings as we go to our homes now. Bring us back tomorrow by your grace to magnify your name again. We ask these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
You may be seated. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, the highlight from this sermon is the image of the beast will bring the union of church and state, a Sunday worshiping power, and persecuting power. Please keep this in mind. We are so glad that so many of you chose to join us in-house as well as online. And online, there were almost 2,000 people joining us across all platforms from places such as um, St. Vincent, Jamaica, and all around the U.S. So we would like to thank you for coming. We hope you are blessed, and we would hope that you will come again soon. Amen. Amen. We thank you for coming and also for viewing online. Remember to be here bright and early tomorrow to spend the Sabbath with God and hear what the pastor has in store for us. Our Sabbath school begins at 9.15 a.m. and you could join us for a divine service at 10.45 Eastern Standard Time. We will meet again tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock p.m. for the evening service here and online. Do not forget that we have a date with Jesus each evening at 7.15 p.m. for the Victory Evangelistic Daniel and Revelation series. And please make it fit it in your schedule to be here bright and early tomorrow morning where our topic will be the fullness of time. And it definitely will be interesting. So we hope that you all will join us. Please continue to come and receive the word of God, and have a blessed Sabbath. Amen. Please bow your heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us here. Thank you for all you've done for us. Please bless those who were hearing, who are in the hearing of the speaker's voice. Please help that they will all understand what they have heard and be able to use it in the near future. Dear Heavenly Father, please help all those who are making the decision to come to you to be able to be baptized and be born again and become part of your family. Dear Heavenly Father, please bless all those who will be journeying home tonight. Please may they get to where they have to be safely and wake us all up tomorrow morning so that we may be able to come together and fellowship and worship you on your holy Sabbath day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Feels our land still.
some people doubt he'll come again. But the word of God is true. He Redemption draws.